So I mentioned we've got a special guest with us, and uh, I think this is our second event with us with him here, joining us in the booth. We've got Scotty B. White. Welcome, Scotty. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, having me up here, Greg. And uh, Brian, I, I'm sorry that you're missing this wonderful weather today. Oh, well, I mean, I, I just know that the rain follows you around. So I said to myself, oh, oh, wherever oh, Scott oh. is going to be, I'm staying away this weekend. Oh, <laughs> man, the Seattle curse. I hate that. People were yelling at me at Buttonwell. That's, that's <laughs> good stuff. Greg, you'd mentioned on the opening lap that the uh, that the uh, uh, Jorge Navarro uh, Corvette I was off the pace coming out of 12. Off the pace because it was so sideways that I could read the number on the camera from down by turn <laughs> turn 12 uh, turn one. Uh, that car was mega loose coming out of 12, uh, and that's why it dropped back two or three. Or, yeah, coming out of 12. That's why it came dropped back two or three spots. Yeah, and uh, that, that has given uh, Simon a, a huge advantage at this point in that uh, 911 GT3 Cup car uh, here with Nazario still trying to make up space. We are now watching uh, that battle for third position uh, in GT2, Jack Stanford and Pete Peterson. So Scott, Scotty, this morning when there was all those problems in the S's, um, our, our, our guess was that if you got offline in the S's on the left there, the, 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 the camber of the corner goes right towards the wall. Is that kind of what was happening with those cars? They were just kind of getting sucked off the track? Yeah, pretty much. There was a couple of, uh, there was a couple of paths of rivers, more or less, coming across there, which would just kind of... Uh, uh, you know, the car would just begin to float. And even if you had all the input right, uh, you know, easy throttle and the steering straight and everything, if your trajectory wasn't right, the car would just sail off. When it put, once it put a wheel off to the left, it was like magnetized to the wall. Right. Uh, you know, Danny, Danny Stain uh, took a big hit down there, which is so unlike him. I mean, the guy's such a talented shoe, and uh, especially in the rain. Um, yeah. And uh, I was really shocked to see him, uh, to see him hit the fence. Well, and you know it's rough when guys with that kind of talent, you know, get into that kind of a situation.
and uh, in our GT2 field, Simon Aslan in his uh, 911 Cup car uh, continues uh, to open up uh, time on Jorge Nazario as Aslan uh, goes in his starting lap number five now. Nazario uh, has not even come down the hill yet. Uh, we'll catch him. There he comes yeah. as he uh, comes across start finish, almost 14 seconds in arrears of our GT2 leader. Absolutely. Also wanted to mention, we talked about Ann Doherty earlier. She was one of our uh, uh, drivers of distinction at the runoffs from, from our, the women on track division that we had. And uh, she won one of our, uh, earned one of our awards there. And you, you, you have to realize the, the, the conditions at VI Heart last year at the runoffs were actually worse than we have here today. So uh, and she was able to shine there. I, so I'm, I'm not surprised at all that she's doing a, a good job here today. Yeah, she's been uh, she's been like I said, we've been watching her from the from the beginning, and and she is just uh, you know she's she certainly has not plateaued yet. She's still still finding pace, and you know she's hanging out with uh, uh, you know with Gama and Simon and the and the boys over there at Racer on Rails, and and uh, and doing these big tracks clear across the U.S. So you got uh, you got a couple of Seattle teams bringing bringing truckloads of cars out here, and and. Uh, Anyway, she's uh, she's she's doing a good job as are all those guys. Says so Simon is also a pretty new guy, and uh, he's really taken to this 911. Yeah, and and I was I was just looking here as uh, you know, Brian, as we're starting to see some areas uh, where the track is drying out primarily, as the drivers are starting to put the power down, starting to dig out of some of the corners like 10B, like Turn Seven, and heading up the hill, Simon has now turned in a lap time that is uh, almost four seconds faster than the first two laps of the race. It's still about 10 seconds off of what we saw in yesterday's race uh, in the full drive. But uh, again, it's the drivers as they're experimenting and finding places on track where things are a little drier, they are starting to find a little bit more time. Looks like Jorge is starting to step it up a little bit too. He's getting a little bit more comfortable. He might be driving with his wall a little bit. That's a brand new car to him that came from uh, <laughs> <laughs> came from the God build uh, over at Phoenix, and and uh, he's uh, he's probably he, he might be driving with his wall a little bit, get a good scare on the on the start of the race there, and decide to uh, kind of bring it up slowly. Well, I mean, he, he was facing the inside wall. I mean, that's he, he was looking at the inside wall at one point coming out as well. <laughs> it was crazy.
All right, so as we now have seven laps in the books, working lap number eight, Simon Aslett is your leader in GT2 with Jorge Nazario. Uh, starting to close things down just a little bit, sitting about 16 seconds in arrears. Tony Ave, however, just crossed the start finish line. He sets the fastest lap of the race. He is our first driver uh, below the 140 threshold, turns in a 138 104. Here he's running third overall, and uh, he has now really opened things up over the uh, over the McLaren of McAleen and about 15 seconds separating those two drivers. And Doherty running third in T1. Uh, Jack Stanford sixth overall and uh, running third in GT2 is both he and Pete Peterson uh, cross the stripe. But this has been a nice little uh, nice little fight that's been shaping up for the last couple of laps as uh, Stanford with only about. Uh, I'd say only about four car lengths separating he and Pete Peterson right now as uh, they run up the hill towards the top of turn three. Yeah, and those cars are those cars uh, make their uh, make their lap times dramatically different. So uh, um, that's uh, probably a, a frustration and a joy to each one of them in different areas of the track. <laughs> I I was just going to say I think we know exactly where the uh, the Porsche is strong, uh, very strong, obviously under braking, uh, maybe digging out of some corners when it, uh, it gets the uh, gets the power down finally. But uh, obviously in a straight line, I think uh, horsepower is king there with uh, Jack Stanford able to open up a bit of a gap every time there's a straightaway. We can see where the Porsche starts to close things up uh, here. And also very strong, the Porsche very strong in that uh, uh, that last little section of the track over at turns 10A and 10B. But here is where the 15 machine will start to stretch its legs. Yeah, providing that there's no puddles in the middle of the straightaway, but uh, <laughs> then then that's where he'll have the, have the strength. Brian is uh, Tony Ave. Uh, we saw him pass Jorge Nazario going down under braking into turn 10A. Uh, Ave, who once again sets fast on the lap, he's now down into the low 137s, uh, is now uh, still your T1 leader, running second overall. Yeah, you can there you definitely go, Mike, see right here the dry line is 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 clear, and it's about a, a, a lap, uh, a, a car width and a half uh, is the dry line at the moment, and it's just going to get bigger.
Welcome back to the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Brian Polanski here. Greg Ginsburg is over there in Atlanta with Scotty B. White. Greg, I just took a peek at the radar, and it looks really, really positive for the rest of the afternoon. It, uh, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for you to say that it's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> that, that is, that is well, I, I mean, if I'm going to start quoting bands, I might as well quote a Georgia band already. That's right. Uh, but, uh, right from Athens, but about 20 miles down the road from here. 20 miles away from here, exactly. So uh, uh, very, very good as uh, we see here on our timing tower. Uh, about, uh, about 13 minutes, give or take, uh, left to go. Uh, and uh, it is uh, meant to be a timed race, uh, 35 minutes or though 19 laps, uh, whichever comes first. And coming down the pit lane, Brian, uh, we saw him uh, let out a little bit, come off the pace just a little while ago. Looks like Pete Peterson uh, is uh, calling it a session. He's gone more than halfway at this point, and uh, right. maybe he doesn't want to burn the tires up. As, uh, maybe he does have a set of wets on that car. Maybe as the, uh, the track is drying out, doesn't want to burn up a set of tires uh, here. But uh, we're also seeing a, uh, a bit of a change. We know that uh, Tony Ave has been pushing the pace all, uh, all session long. And what we're seeing now coming out of turn five, making the rundown to turn six, we've got Tony Ave now only about three car lengths back from Simon Aslan for our overall lead. Uh, that last time by Ave was almost four seconds faster than the Porsche. Uh, all three, uh, both of those drivers coming up on the back of the number 15 machine of uh, Jack Stanford looking to put Stanford a lap down but Ave with a great run out of turn number seven looks like he is now going to take over the overall lead and that's a T1 car uh, coming from the back of the field to take over the lead uh, over all the GT1 cars uh, the GTX car uh, so you know that's the the benefit of having that very nicely set up uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, AMG is uh, it's definitely the better car for these conditions. Yeah, and you can see there where Stanford's having some issues getting through 10B, the rear end, as he's got to be very, very light on the throttle there, coming out uh, before he gets that dry patch. The rear end steps out just a little bit, and our uh, our two leaders, Tony Ave, Simon Aslan, they both get by uh, that number 15 machine as they now head down. Uh, towards turn number one. Actually, it looks like Simon is still, uh, still trying to get by. See our corner workers throwing a blue flag. That means we've got a racetrack good enough to do some passing on, and uh, yeah. th there is a little of that going on now that we didn't get to see in the earlier races. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, I wanted to give a shout out too to to Simon. I've been watching him. Uh, uh, I've been watching him all weekend in that in that Porsche. And uh, his level of commitment in that car is really high and really impressive for somebody that hasn't been driving it that long. Um, he's uh, he, he really looks comfortable in that car. Oh, we got something going on there. Well, well, and it looks like Simon finally managed to uh, get around uh, the number 15 machine, uh, having followed him around for uh, three quarters of a lap. And uh, talk about commitment. He pushed that car very deep down into 10A from the inside. A big wiggle there in the wet. Uh, gets the pass done, however. Uh, so, uh, uh, again, that was uh, putting uh, one of his competitors, Jack Stanford, a lap down. Actually putting the third place GT2 car a lap down. So, uh, Simon now all the way uh, uh, up to, uh, well, he's lapped all the way up to uh, sixth position overall. And, of course, Tony Ave. Uh, has lapped that far as well, our overall leader, leader in T1. And that included a big wiggle, uh, uh, running a little bit uh, of a late turn in on 12 and dipping the left rear tire in the puddle there. I, I thought I, it wasn't huge, but it was enough that sure would have got my attention. Yeah. <laughs> and I imagine if you were in the seat behind the wheel, probably, would, yeah, absolutely get the, uh, get the attention here as uh, he's, hey, we talk about commitment, he's carried a lot of speed through that camper turn six as well. Um, 
see, you know, a lot of machines, even the GTX car, getting very heavy on the brakes going in there. And he just carries a lot of speed all the way through turn seven and up the hill and out of, uh, out of seven onto the front straight. I get to thinking about it. You know, Simon's a pretty small guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's fairly, he's not short, but he's, he's kind of a slight build. And I, I don't know if you've ever driven one of those cup cars, but it takes about two legs and an extra hydraulic press to push to on the, the brake pedal. Maybe he just yeah. can't get the thing slowed down. That That's why possible. he's got so much commitment in the quarters. I don't know. Well, if you're using right, the brakes, you're not going fast enough, Scotty. That's right. That's right. All they do is slow you down. <laughs> and, and sometimes they don't. Winding things down, about five minutes remaining uh, in this race. Tony Ave uh, now in command, not only a T1, but the entire field here opening up almost a 12 second advantage uh, over Simon Aslan, our GT2 leader uh, in the number 81 Porsche 911 GT Cup car. And uh, uh, got, uh, let's see, showing white flag in the air because, uh, you know, uh, uh, as we're only, we got five minutes remaining, but on laps, we are now working, Brian, right. lap number 19. So we are now on the final lap as uh, Tony Ave in that number 61, that beautiful uh, bright blue Mercedes AMG GT4 machine makes his way around the course. That's right. That is impressive considering the conditions. Yes. That we're getting all the laps in well under the uh, the allotted time. Yeah, and, you know, and I'm looking at the GT2 car times Ooh. from yesterday so so pete took the win yesterday in the toyota ran a uh, ran pretty much a 27 flat and uh, at this point ave's at a 35 in these conditions which yeah. i think is just absolutely stunning
Here he is under braking, coming into the final sets of corners here at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. Tony Ave, your leader in T1 and overall. That beautiful Mercedes coming up and underneath the Fox Factory Bridge with one more corner remaining. And Tony Ave takes the checkered flag, takes the win in T1. So um, Simon Aslan comes home with the win uh, in GT2, finishes second overall. Jorge Nazario uh, comes across the stripe, will finish third overall, second in GT2.